Well, it is that time of the year when, for ceremonial purposes, I must once again remind you how much I love graduations. This morning, as I was, the university is now all done. This morning, I was going down 896, and it's high school graduation day today. Huge numbers of cars coming to wherever it is they have high school graduations down there. Uh, it, it's a lovely time to imagine that something new is happening, something is being finished, something new is beginning. And I suppose there is something in that. There's an awful lot of time spent in not yet getting ready in heading toward that day when you say, okay, now finally I have arrived at this thing that I was working toward for all this time, whether it's 12 years in order to get a high school diploma or four years or five years, whatever it takes people to get bachelor's degrees nowadays or whatever degree they may be getting. And there's something lovely about that, the idea that something new is beginning. At the same time, it really doesn't quite work that way. I am confident that after a whole bunch of newly minted bachelors and masters and doctors went to bed Saturday night in Newark, they wake, woke up Sunday morning to realize they had forgotten to buy milk, they had no gas, the cat box needed to be cleaned out. All the same things that were there on Saturday were still there on Sunday. And somehow having the new piece of paper, the new hat, whatever they got for their trouble, didn't really change every detail about their lives. They still had to figure out how to live. <clears throat> this, I think, is where both the followers of Jesus and the opponents of Jesus find themselves in this little story from the gospel today. All of them, in the form of Israel writ large, have been waiting a long time for God to act, to send God's Messiah. And I think some of them have gotten stuck in that not yet phase. They've gotten so used to the idea that it's going to happen, but it hasn't happened yet. They haven't gotten to graduation yet that they can't even imagine it ever coming to that point. Those who have gotten PhDs will know that there are some doctoral students who kind of live their lives this way. Uh, one more semester and one more semester and one more semester and they're ABD until they're 75. That isn't the way it's supposed to work. Eventually, the day comes. And so part of what is frustrating to Jesus and probably to some of his followers is that the day did come. It was pretty obvious what the day was in certain ways if you read the prophets and know what the Messiah is supposed to look like. And yet there are people who just were unable to make that leap in their minds. Then there are all these other people too who are aware but are somehow trying to figure out what it means. What does it mean to fast or not fast? What does it mean to observe your faith in some way or another way? Uh, in the presence of God's Messiah, what does that even mean? Are the rules the same? Have the rules changed? I woke up today. I graduated yesterday. Surely I'm a different person today. Well, yeah, but the cat is still looking at me like I haven't done my job. So the way this works out for you and for me, I think, is to imagine that we also are in that position. We who have waited for God to act and yet who live after God has already acted imagining that somehow this is meant to change every aspect of our lives and yet to discover that our lives continue in much the same way. That's a delicate balance that you and I are up against to recognize that we live after Easter every day. Even though we go through this cycle year after year after year, we are always living after Easter. We are always living as redeemed people something that was once not true for us, now is. And we should live accordingly. At the same time, we can't imagine that somehow this is going to fix every one of our problems. That somehow it's going to transform our lives in ways that are beyond our imagining. The real way of living our lives as faithful people is when we engage that faith in the junk we come up against every single day the adversity that we face, the skepticism that we deal with within ourselves and in other people, all of the grind that it takes to live a human life <clears throat> is no different for a faithful person than it is for a faithless person. You and I are called at least to look at it all in, 
through the lens of our faith. So have a moment of, of joy for those who have graduated this week or are graduating soon will, that something new and dramatic will happen in their lives. Have a moment of sympathy for those who are still in the waiting phase. And remember that all of that is somehow being played out day by day in our lives as well. Amen.